Welcome to the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network, a weekly broadcast sponsored by CVC Success Group, hosted each week by industry speaker, coach, author, and educator, Jerry Eisenhower. Our presentations are produced to assist business owners and managers in turning their business dreams into their business realities. And now, here is your host, Jerry Eisenhower. You know, we all want to see eagles soar. Just think about it. Think about standing there, looking in the sky, and watching eagles soar over. A majestic eagle. Maybe you're standing on top of a mountain. Maybe you're on the beach. Wherever you are, a majestic eagle can give you inspiration. But you know, one of the things we have to remember is, before eagles can soar, the first thing they have to do is learn to fly. And you know, the eagle starts life in an egg, much like your eagles are gonna start with you as a new recruit. Now the goal is to make them soar like eagles. So stay with me, we'll be right back with the rest of our story. Bringing your team to the level of expertise you expect and want from them is a job in itself. And let's be honest, in our industry, is the learning ever really over? Why not turn training over to the experts at the CVC Success Group? Subject matter experts in your industry have joined forces to create the CVC Academy online, on site, or live streaming. Training for your team in format options that work best for their individual needs. CVC Success Group has thought of everything to help put you and your team on the path to success. Hey, thanks for being back with me. You know, I was reading on a Facebook forum the other day in an industry forum. And I saw a poll and it asked the following questions. What are the main challenges that the hearth industry faces in the coming name, in the coming days? And it gave a couple of choices to pick from. Number one was, is the challenge going to come from big box stores, the home improvement centers? Number two, was the challenge going to come due to e-commerce? Number three, Was it going to come because natural gas was being banned in more and more communities around the country? Another choice was, is changing consumer shopping habits, is that going to be the challenge? And lastly, the choice was the transition from brick and mortar stores to an entirely new way that the consumer shops and buys today. But you know, as I looked at this poll, and I thought about it some, the answer really wasn't there. He hadn't supplied the right answer. Because my answer was that you've got to build a culture-driven workforce, and that workforce has got to be properly equipped to handle any of these challenges and more. And you know, the guy that made that poll up, his name was Grant Falco, and he actually came on and cheered my audition and said he agreed with me. He agreed. So what I had done was offer him a different point of view from what he was thinking. And you see, that's a lot of what we do in the world today is we have to be open to others' points of view. But see, like I said, that is the big challenge, the big issue that you face today as an owner, as a manager. And it's a twofold, two-faced challenge. Because the first thing we have to do is we have to find the people to teach to fly. And once we found them, we got to make them into superstars. Superstars that truly do soar like eagles. I want you to think about this for just a minute. What if you had a team of soaring eagles on your team? Soaring eagles that could navigate no matter what the storm was. Superstars that would be viewed as the king of the sky much as the majestic eagle is. But how do you do that? It's tough out there today. Because first of all, you got the problem of finding them. And in today's market, I got to ask you the question, what's the bait that you've got to throw out to attract the right people to come on your team? Not just more bodies, 
not just someone that may have the skills, but not the right culture. You see, the secret of success in today's time is, and it's really always been this way, we got to look for the right culture because we can certainly train them for the skills they're going to need. You see, the systems are out there for you to put it all together. But you've got to open yourself up to different points of view for different ways of doing business. Because this is what's going to take if you're going to provide them their eagle wings. You see, you got to learn to understand what's involved in these high-flying antics. How does that eagle soar? like it does on the, on, the, on the clouds, on the wind. And what we have to do is that point is, is keep on with the tricks required, the processes required for them to learn to perform flawlessly. But if you're gonna do that, the first thing is you have to understand them. We also have to understand what we have in our heads and how are we going to transfer this information to them in a way that they get it and they can use it? Let me share with you a little story. This is one of my gold nuggets of my life. Because I've been training for a lot of years. I've trained live. I've trained with recording sessions. I've done live stream. But training is something I've done for over 35 years now. And the following is one of the magic moments of my training. And I often share this with people because what I was doing, I had a classroom full, probably close to a hundred people in this room. And I was going through and I was talking about standard changes at NFPA 211 that were done in the year 1984. Well, a young man in my class held up his hand and I said, yes, what's your question? And it wasn't a question. He made a statement. He said, Jerry, I got a problem with what you're saying. Please tell me what the problem is. You're trying to teach me and tell me stuff that happened before I was ever born. Now, so you'll know, this was probably one of the magic moments, one of the gold nuggets of personal learning for myself. Because it was at this point in time that I became aware that what I had learned in little dribbles and drabs and by living through many of the changes of the industry I was teaching about, I was able to absorb this as it was happening. I was able to absorb and put it to use little pieces at the time. But in today's world, it's not like that for your new hires. In today's world, there's a lot to learn. A lot of things that we didn't have to know earlier. To I have one woman some years ago, and it was at the first Heat Shield Conference back in 2011. And I had the majority of the presentation for that. John Meredith, a very good friend, allowed me to do the majority of the presentation. And I was doing a presentation about changing your DNA to today's way of doing business. And after it was over with, there was an attendee. And that attendee is retired today, but his sons are running the business. His name was Don Ryan. So Don, if you listen to this, I want you to know, you said something that day that still sticks with me to this day. Because a real good friend of mine named Clay Lamb was doing interviews with attendees, doing video interviews. And when he came up to Don and asked Don what his thoughts were on the seminar that he had just said, he said the following, you know, listen to Jerry, it's like drinking from a fire hose. It's like drinking from a fire hose. And that's one of the problems. 
I've had to learn to slow down my presentation style because I put it out so fast. It was faster than people could absorb it. That was a big change for me. As you're listening to me speak right now, I've had to learn to take pauses. I've had to learn to stop for just a second so my thoughts would embed into your thoughts. So anyway, those are my thoughts for the day. Now, here's the thing. I want you to hang with us because here coming up next, you don't want to go away. Cheryl's going to be stepping up to the mic. And I know that she has her usual tips of wisdom that she's going to share with you. So stick around as she shares her part of the story for the week. It's so hard to find people. Nobody shows up for interviews anymore. I just don't know where to find people. You hear it everywhere and you're not alone. The CVC Success Group has the experience and expertise in assessing candidates, conducting interviews for you, onboarding and training your new hires for a path of success in their new career. Reach out to CVC Success Group and let's talk about the challenges you're facing today. I'm often asked if I can change someone. I'm here to tell you that that just isn't possible. I can help alter how someone feels about something in hopes that they will want to change. Always remember, change comes from within. Even in the prison systems of the day, they work to rehabilitate the prisoner. If he accepts what they are doing and they can show him the things that would benefit him or the things that would be adversely negative, he can then choose, again, choose to accept these ideas and to begin the changing from within. Actually, it's no different in any person's life. If you take an alcoholic, a smoker, or even an obese person that is possibly shortening their life, and then they're doing nothing to lose the weight. We can ask them all we want to to stop what they're doing. And actually, in certain situations, they can even be forced to go into programs to stop. But if they don't want this from within, it may alter them for a while, but they will not sustain and return back to the same old ways. We see it day after day. You probably actually know someone that this has happened to. And actually, you have probably, if I would guess, you have heard that it takes 66 days to change a habit. I know that because that's the number I respond to when people ask. And many say, well, why, why 66? I was always told 30. Well, basically, the reason it gives you two months to feel the effect of the change. Then it's your decision if the change is worthwhile. If it is, you'll continue. If not, you'll go back to the old habit. Many people never make the 30 days, believe it or not much less the 66. The key is to understand that you can't extinguish a bad habit, but you can change that habit. And you can still get the same rewards you currently get from the old habit. It's a matter of wanting to change. Again, it's changing from within. Now, I'm pretty sure you're wondering and asking why does this have or what does it have to do with my business? Well, let's say you've got an employee not working at full potential. They just have too many bad habits. Question, what do you do? Many companies often offer higher pay to improve the performance. And does this really work? I've always believed that the best way to approach a problem is to open a conversation. It needs to be a two-way conversation. Each has their own opinion. You have to explain to them in your part of the conversation what good can come from the change, you know, such as higher salary or promotion, or what negative things can come from change. 
such as losing their position in the company or even worse, being fired. Again, with this, the change must be their decision and the outcome of the decision must be yours. And this isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to take a period of time. But if the change doesn't start, then what do you want to do? The problem is many times when they don't change, we just hold on to the employee. And we just keep talking and talking the same old conversation over and over. The one thing I can tell you for sure is that if you see it, so have your other employees. Some will just pass it off, but others will do one of two things. Number one, they'll get upset and resentful of this person. Or worse yet, they will quit trying so much. Because if you let this person do it, then why should they not be able to slack off? So now, what's your decision? Do you, do you bring them in? Do you talk to them again and again? Or do you set your expectations? To begin with, expect your managers to set a good example. But prior to the example, or prior to the managers, make sure you set a good example. Employees tend to mimic the behavior of their authority figures. If your managers are not doing their jobs or spending most of the day coming up with inventive ways to avoid work, chances are your employees will follow the suit. Make sure your managers know exactly what is expected of them and follow up with them regularly to make sure they are serving as role models for the rest of your employees. Good leaders create good followers. Remember, as Jerry said earlier, to soar like an eagle, and I'll add, and not float around like a duck. So enough of me today. Let's turn it back over to Jerry to add some more thoughts and conclude this podcast for today. As a business owner, you know where you want to take your business, but things keep popping up to block your way. You're not alone. It's hard to see clearly when you're so close to the situation. Where are the roadblocks? What do you need to tackle first? You went out and took a big risk because you've got dreams for your family and your community, and it's time to turn those dreams into reality. CVC Success Group has a proven system to do just that. It's time we talk. Well, I hope what Cheryl just shared with you gives you some value. I hope what she shared with you gives you some of the tools that you're going to have to put to work if you're going to have a team that's going to soar like eagles. I want to remind you something. As a leader, how do you gauge your leadership of your team? It's real simple. You gauge it by the results that they deliver. You know, Cheryl talked about change. And when she and I went through some of our training for public speaking with Larry Wingett and Suzanne Evans, one of the things that we had to do was develop what's called a POV or a point of view. And this was very difficult because this is what you speak from. This is what's at the, the meaning of everything that you do. So Cheryl came up with hers very easily. This was, what a, this was a challenge to me to come up with this. But here was the point of view I developed. And the title of it was, and what did we call it? Change can be painful. It's up to you to make that decision. Do you want to continue going through the present pain you're in? Or do you un want to undergo the pain of change? I'd like to offer you a free gift today. I'd like to be able to send you something. And if you'd like to have this, all you got to do is send me an email at jerry at cbcsuccessgroup.com. Earlier this week, I did a keynote presentation for the infrared camera users in the home inspection industry. And the title of my keynote was 2020, a year of chaos. 2020, a time for reinvention. And I'd love to be able to send you a link to that presentation. It may give you some ideas. 
it goes through and I talk about some of the companies that have had to go through reinvention and where they're at today. But on the other side of the coin, it's going to tell you companies that didn't reinvent, that were really strong in the marketplace at one time, that they have basically disappeared because it was because there wasn't reinvention. And reinvention is what I've been talking about today. Because in order to get that team of yours soaring like majestic eagles, that's probably going to take some change. It's going to take some change in thought processes. It's going to take changes on the onboarding level. It's going to take changes in your dedication to the training that your people go through. But it is possible. It is very possible. You just got to make that decision. When is your magic moment? When will be that magic day and time that you're going to make the decision that your people are going to soar like eagles? That you're going to make the decision that hiring for culture is a much better process than hiring for skill. But you've also got to remember this. This is one of the secrets of successful business. Do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Put that in as your operating process, as your mission to your customers. Because once you do that, you're going to be providing that team of soaring eagles. And the skies are waiting for you to float through them. And with that, we're going to end this episode of the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. It's always a pleasure. It's an honor. And to be honest with you, it's a privilege for you to give me and Cheryl these minutes every week as we share with you the thought processes, the points of view, what we're seeing can and will work if you're ready to implement. So join us next week. Another episode will be coming out. And with that, this is Jerry Eisenhower with CBC Success Group. Keep in mind, if you're ready to face that magic moment, if you're ready to start those new processes, send us an email. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Because you might just find out that the processes and the procedures that we share might just be the answers that you have been looking for. Talk to you later. Thanks for joining us here each week at the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network, sponsored by CVC Success Group, providing you the coaching and educational outreach services you need to move to your dream destination in business and in life.